And we're now on our next video in the introduction to statistics. Um, again, um, our source for this uh, video is from the handouts created by Dr. Sweet Rose Sonaris. So we're now on our um, next topic that is in the simple linear correlation and regression. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about linear correlation and regression um, here for the entirety of this coming videos. Um, in this specific video, we're going to talk about uh, simple linear correlation first. Okay, so first, uh, there are possible relationships between variables. Okay, so when an inferential statistical test concludes that there is a significant relationship between two variables, any of the following five possibilities can exist, actually. So first, it can be a direct cause and effect relationship. Okay, that is X causes Y. Okay, X causes Y or Y causes X. Some of the examples that we can think of are, are uh, you know, water causes plants to grow. That's a very um, simple example. Poison causes death. Heat causes ice to melt. So that's a direct cause and effect relationship. Okay, so that's one of the possible relationships between two variables. Second is reverse cause and effect relationship. Okay, that is, um, sorry, this is this this is y causes x. Okay, so again, the, um, number one uh, is direct cause and effect. That is x causes y, and reverse cause and effect relationship. Sorry, is y causes x. So one example is suppose a researcher believes excessive coffee consumption causes nervousness, but the researcher fails to consider that the reverse situation may occur also. That is, it may be that an extremely nervous person craves coffee to calm his or her nerves. So that that's ha that happens. It's very possible if we have that example. Okay, that's for the reverse. So if excessive coffee um, causes nervousness, it may it may help a very nervous person to calm him or her. Okay, so that's our number three. Um, thirdly is relationships. Uh, caused by a third variable. Okay, so the relationship between the variables may be caused by a third variable. So one example that we can think of is that significant relationship between the number of deaths due to drowning and the number of cans of soft drinks consumed daily during the summer. So, um, however, the soft drink is not necessarily responsible for the deaths since both variables may be related to heat and humidity. Okay, so um, deaths due to drowning and the number of soft drink can uh, number of cans of soft drink consumed, so it may be caused by a third variable or third party. Fourthly, we can think of the complexity of interrelationships. Okay, so there may be a complexity of interrelationships among variables. So one example may be significant relationship between students' um, high school grades and college grades. Right, so there are probably a lot of variables involved, such as IQ, hours of study influence of parents, motivation, age, and instructors or teachers. Okay, so that's a complexity of interrelationships. Number five is, you know, uh, it's it may be coincidental. Okay, so the relationship may be coincidental. So for example, significant relationship between the increase uh, in the number of people who are exercising and the increase of the number of people who are committing crimes. So common sense will tell us that any relationship between these two variables is really you know, due to coincidence. And um, this uh, batch of videos, we will deal with the existence of direct cause and effect relationships between the variables involved. Okay, so we will focus on number one, okay, direct cause and effect relationships. Okay, now um, we may think of the kinds of predictions um, can, uh, can be made, okay, from the relationships. Okay, so, or we can ask ourselves what kind of predictions can be made from these relationships. So we say that predictions are made in all areas, okay, and also in our daily lives. So such examples are in weather forecasting. We are predicting uh, our weather in, in 24 hours and 48 hours in a week. Um, stock market analysis, okay, what will happen? Uh, will this stock increase? Okay, will this stock um, decrease in value and such? Um, sales prediction. Uh, will this be a good a good product to sell or such? Crop predictions, okay? Gasoline price predictions, sports predictions, and a lot more. So uh, these are some kinds of predictions that can be made um, from the relationships. Um, some predictions are more accurate than others, okay, due to the strength of their relationship. Okay, so that is um, to be to make it uh, much much clearer. The stronger the relationship is between these two variables, the more accurate the prediction is. 
data. Okay, so again, um, the stronger relationship, okay, the more accurate we can predict, okay, um, on the future. So we can, you know, we can think of this in 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 in, in a normal relationship. This also happens, right? So, um, here we're going to focus in this batch of videos in linear relationships. Okay, so um, nonlinear relationships may be beyond our scope, but um. We're going to talk about here more on re linear relationships. This brings us back to algebra. So recall our linear function in two variables. We call that x and y, represented by the equation of this. So this is our um, equation of a line, the slope-intercept form specifically. So we have y equals f of x. f of x is the is the function of x. Okay, um, is equal to mx plus b, where our variables are both x and y represent, represented in the graph or in the Cartesian plane as in the x values here for the first and the y values are the are the are the second variable are the second um value so it's um in other terms this is the d independent variable this is the dependent variable okay of our of our it well in 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 the in the phase of algebra okay so um, but the thing is, x and y are our two variables. M is what we call the slope. Again, the slope is the measure of the steepness of the line or the degree of influence of x on y. It also defined. It is also defined as the change in y for every one unit increase or decrease in x. And b is our y-intercept. Okay, b is our y-intercept. So again, a y-intercept is identified identified as the value of the variable y when x is set to zero. So if we're going to look at the graph of this function, the b is found on on the line when it touches or intersects with the y-axis. So that's our the value of our b actually. Okay. So one example can be. You know, let's think of this. If a small bottle of Coke, all right, you served, sells for 10 pesos within the USLS campus, establish a data set that shows the number of bottles sold and the corresp corresponding total amount to pay for them. So how do you write this? We can write this as in the form of a table first. So we're, we'll, we will say and let X as the number of bottles, Y to be the total amount. So if we... If we're going to buy one bottle, that will cost us 10 pesos. If it's two bottles, it costs, costs us one, 2 times 10, that's 20 pesos. Three bottles, 30 pesos. Four bottles, 40 pesos. Five bottles, 50 pesos, and so on. So this is our table of values for our X and Y variables. So one bottle gives us um, 10 pesos. Two bottles give us, gives us 20 pesos. Three bottles, um, we need to pay 30 pesos, and so on. So we can graph this also. So looking at the graph of this, we can see that it will look like this. So this is our total amount. This is our number of bottles. So we can see that 1 equals 10, 2 equals 20, 3 equals 30, 4 equals 40, and so on. So we can see that the equation is equal to y equals 10x. So where x is the number of bottles and y is the total amount, depending on, on the number of bottles you will buy. Okay, so that's our equation of our line. Okay, similarly, we will also use this in our linear relationships. Okay. Now, we will now look at relationship between two variables. And this is actually a source of interesting questions of statistical analysis. Some examples will, uh, will, which will, which will, which is kind of interesting is that how many traffic fatality, fatalities will occur in a city as more cars share the streets. So as the number of cars will increase, will the traffic fatalities increase also? Will that tell us a yes or not really? Also, we may think of how much will regional water consumption increase if the population increases by 1,000 people. So will the water um, consumption increase um, significantly or not, all, not at all? Okay, so these are the sort of the interesting questions that we are into in statistics. So elements which are common in the above examples is that it's composed of a pair of quantitative variables. So um, for the first example, we can see the traffic fatalities, fatalities, okay, traffic fatalities, um, and the number of cars in a, in the streets. In the second example, we can see that the the first variable is regional water consumption. Um, paired with the population increase or the population 
Okay, so uh, in both examples above, it's composed of a pair of quantitative variables. And we have this theoretical reason to expect that the two variables are connected. Okay, so these are the, ele the common elements in the above examples. Now, the next question would be, how can we effectively determine if the two variables are connected? Or we can say, we can use the word associated or correlated. So these this, uh, these words here um, compose of a, uh, or rather is is taken as um, equal. So how do we determine if the two variables are correlated or are associated or are connected? So we will use this statistical tool, which we call the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. So some books will call this as PPMCC as the abbreviation. So PPMCC, or some will just call it Pearson R, or just R. So Pearson came from the name of Carl Pearson, okay, one of the great, uh, great names in statistics. So um, this, uh, this measure is the one that will tell us about the linear relationship of two variables. Okay, And this will lead us to our next lesson in Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, uh, or the Pearson R. So the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, or the Pearson R, or simply as the R, is a measure of linear relationship between two variables and not causation. So causation is from the word cause. So it does not determine whether one variable causes a change in the other, but only tells us the measure of relationship. So is the relationship strong? Is it um, is it is it positive? Is it negative? We're going to discuss that in a while. Um, it it is a measurement of variables. And the variables must be at least interval. Okay, remember the, the skills of measurement that we have. We have the nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So measurements, if when we're using the Pearson R, must be at least interval. The two sets of measurements, X and Y, are taken from each of the subjects in the sample for each of the variables, X and Y. So um, both of these X and Y must be taken from each of the subjects, each of the respondent, shall we say. And the possible scatter plot of the points, X and Y, are shown below. So we can see here um, in these first two examples, they show the linear trend actually. So we can imagine a line here. We call that actually the line of best fit. Imagine a line which which uh, which traces all the line all the all the dots, but it's the best fit. It doesn't trace um, exactly all the dots, but it traces a single line that traces um, the path of the dots. So we can see here, this is one example of a negative linear correlation. As x increases in number, as x increases here in the x-axis, y decreases, y decreases rather, or y tends to decrease. So this is one example of a linear correlation. So as x increase, y decrease. Okay, this in the other hand, okay, is a positive linear correlation. So we have here, as x increases, y also increases. So this is a positive linear correlation. So that's it. These two are show us a linear trend. The other two doesn't show us any linear trend. Um, we can see here that there is no correlation. The the dots are are jumping around the first quadrant or this um, first quadrant of the Cartesian plane. So there are no correlation whatsoever here. Um, in this last picture um, here, we can see that this is a nonlinear correlation. So this is not a line actually. This shows us a parabola. And this is nonlinear um, correlation or nonlinear relationship. So this is beyond the scope of our lesson. But um, be aware that there are some correlations which is nonlinear. Okay. So we're going to focus here in in both of these uh, two graphs here. And uh, we're going to now go to the the correlation coefficient. So we have again the parameter and statistic. For the parameter, we use the row. Actually, the name here is a Spearman rank order coefficient. That's the row, but um, statistic is the Pearson R. But uh, let's just have now the Pearson R for now, where the formula looks like this. Okay, so this is the, the row score formula. Um, technically, we can use this when we do the manual, um, the manual um, computation or the manual manipulation of the of the Pearson R. But hey, we're going to use um, technology here, okay, in this video, actually in the next video, okay, in how to do or how to find the Pearson R using Excel and Jamovi. So um, that's coming up. Um, we, before we end this um, Pearson R, before we go to the, the examples, let's have some remarks first, okay, for us to fully understand 
um, the Persian R. So number one is that R, the R value, must only be between minus one to positive one. So it 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 only has this this universe between minus one to positive one. Um, minus one, it gives us a negative value for R. Positive one or plus one gives us a positive value for R. Let's discuss that in a while. R now rather. So a positive R or a positive value for R implies that it is a direct relationship. So as x increases, y also increases. Okay. So x increases with or rather y increases with x so that happens when our r value is positive or it's more than zero um technically if r is negative or we have a negative value for r it implies that it is an inverse relationship so as x increases y decreases or as x decreases y increases so that's a negative or an inverse relationship okay that happens when our r value is minus or negative okay so we say that it's if if our r value is exactly one or positive one it's a perfect direct relationship and if our r value is minus one it's a perfect inverse relationship so it's it's directly okay inverse or if it's positive one it's that uh perfectly di direct relationship when it comes that the coefficient or the r value is zero, because you know zero is between minus one and positive one, so it's very possible that our r value is zero. But if it is zero, it implies that it it has or it doesn't have any linear relationship. So it's an absence of linear relationships between the two variables being correlated. So there's no um there's no relationship whatsoever. So x val the x values um is not changed. Okay, or rather the y values, the y. Uh, shall we put it or rephrase it y doesn't depend on x so whatever the x value is y has its own set of values so it doesn't have any relationship okay so measures um this measures the person r measures a bi-directional relationship so x and y are related further independent and dependent variables are not specified so um also only a bi-directional relationship x and y but not about the independent and dependent variables though we name them in algebra going back in the formula y equals mx plus p we name them as independent and dependent variables but that's in algebra here in statistics and in the research we we tend not to use these words when we talk about bidirectional relationship okay now um in the next video we're going to um discuss on how to um, find the Pearson R value using Microsoft Excel and Jamovi. So, um, you know, see you in the next video. After this, I'm going to present on how to find the Pearson R. So, um, thank you very much for watching this. Um, I hope that you would like and subscribe this video. And yeah, there will be more videos after this. So, thank you very much again. See ya.